take a deep breath because this place right here on the northwest tip of Tasmania has some of the cleanest air in the world. The air, I don't know if it's just me, but it's so crisp and clean. You feel like you, feel like you can breathe it properly. It's a magnificent. It's a place that feels like the edge of the world, where a wild and rugged coastline is frequently lashed by intense weather that's been endured by generations of farmers who run cattle in this pristine part of the island state. When the wind blows in from the sea, it's travelled across the Southern Ocean from as far away as Antarctica, meaning it's avoided the contaminants like dust from land masses and the dirty pollution of cities. The Kennewick Cape Grim Air Monitoring Station was set up almost 50 years ago. Its measurements are considered to be an accurate baseline of the global atmosphere because it's free from local contamination. It's a thousand times cleaner in terms of the number of particles than that you would measure in Melbourne, for example. And that's Melbourne on a good day. Through a series of instruments, air gets channeled into a laboratory where high-tech gadgets analyse the physical and chemical properties of the incoming flow. In a nutshell, we measure our greenhouse gases and ozone-depleting substances. If we see chemicals entering that baseline sector, we know that we've been having an influence on how we're polluting the atmosphere. Six times a year, liquid nitrogen is used to chill high-pressure tanks that suck in thousands of litres of baseline air adding to an archive of air that dates back almost five decades. And what it's enabled us to do is by filling uh, multiple cylinders per year over many years that we can go back and actually analyse old air when we get new instrumental techniques. The air archive provides a stark reflection of the changing composition of the Earth's atmosphere. The oldest cylinder here contains about 330 parts per million of carbon dioxide. The newest has about 417 parts per million, an increase of almost 25% since the late 1970s. And so the record here has shown that we are having an influence on the CO2 in the atmosphere, which is you know, contributing to us climate warming. But while scientists have a clear picture of the past, the computations used to forecast future changes are lacking critical data. Australian and US researchers have now teamed up here at Kennewick Cape Grim as part of an international mission designed to unravel some of the mysteries of clouds in the Southern Ocean. When clouds form in freezing conditions, tiny particles like dust and pollution can trigger ice crystals to develop. But because the air is cleaner in the Southern Ocean, the water droplets remain in a super cool liquid state. These liquid clouds reflect more sunlight back into space, which means less heat is absorbed by the ocean. This phenomenon isn't accurately accounted for in current climate models. The models are telling us incorrectly there's a lot more heat in the system than we actually are measuring, particularly over the Southern Ocean. After more than a year of planning, members of the US Energy Department have set up an array of sophisticated equipment to analyse how liquid clouds are formed and the impact they have on climate change. So we have a lot of instruments, radars and lidars and cameras that are constantly scanning these clouds to tell us what kind they are, how high they are, what they're made of, do they have ice, are they supercooled liquid. To mitigate and prepare for the changing climate, scientists need accurate data and it's hoped this project here at Kennewick Cape Grim will provide a critical piece of that climate puzzle. So if we get them absolutely right, then we've got a lot more confidence that the actions that we're going to need to take are informed by the best available data and the best available science that we, we could possibly have. It's hugely important to be able to manage risk. So without measuring the atmospheric composition, we won't be able to manage those risks that we face as the climate changes and as humans change the climate. Providing critical information that scientists hope can better prepare us for the changing climate. Jono Gibson, ABC News, Kennewick, Cape Grim.